Welcome to the Telabs Optical LAN 1150E OLT installation part 1. In this video, we will demonstrate the cabling installation of the Telabs 1150E Optical LAN terminal. The first thing to remember is when we start tying our uh, our equipment into the rack that we need to make sure there's adequate ventilation space. Uh, the 1150E shelf will have a fan unit above and below uh, the installation. You'll need to make sure that there's at least three quarters of an inch of, uh, of space above the upper fan and three, to three quarters of an inch below the lower fan. When installing the fans, the fans will first go in. You want to make sure that you tie these in with, with four mounting screws for each hole and with no space between the fan and the shelf. Now, each fan and the shelf itself will need to be grounded to the rack itself. In order to do this, the, uh, the fans do come with a, a grounding wire. Uh, this will need to be tied to the shelf itself. Before you ground, you need to make sure uh, that you scrape any paint off of the rack so that there's, uh, there's clear contact between uh, the ground screw uh, and the ground wire. Also, there's grounding for the shelf itself. There's two studs here. You'll need to uh, prepare a ground wire for this. Uh, the studs are 5 eighths inch uh, distance. If you can't find a, a two hole lug like this one, you can use a one hole uh, as long as you're using a, a, a star washer uh, for the connection. Again, uh, this will be connected from the shelf to the rack and you'll also need to make sure that you scrape paint again in order for proper grounding. Okay, once all the grounds have been established, you also have a digital ground cable that connects to the shelf. Uh, this comes with the powering harness, uh, it connects to the plug at the bottom of the shelf and then this will need to be connected to uh, the ground facility. Next we'll do is we'll take and we'll, we'll put the power cables. These power cables will need to be routed to your power source, your 48 volt power source. Uh, each fan unit has its own uh, power harness that connects to the front of the shelf. It also has a connector that is for your alarm. So if there is ever a fan uh, failure, you want to make sure that the shelf knows about it. Uh, this will connect to a Y cable. The Y cable, one end will go to uh, one of your shelves, one of your fan shelves. The other end of the Y cable uh, will come to the other uh, fan shelf. So you'll route that to the top and to the bottom. The other end of the Y cable then will be connected uh, to the bottom of the shelf at the appropriate connector. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the power cables and the power harness to the 1150E shelf. Uh, you'll need to make sure that these are routed to your power source, 48 volts. These are clearly marked uh, power A, power B, uh, they will uh, go into power A, power B connectors at the bottom of the shelf. Okay, the 1150 shelf, after it's uh, you've connected all the wiring, you just want to make sure uh, that there's no damage to the shelf. Uh, these come with uh, dummy cards and the dummy cards will be removed as you start installing these, uh, these cards. Uh, so what this does is it allows uh, the air to flow inside uh, the system and keep the, the rest of the electronics cool. Before you begin the installation of the 1150E shelf, you need to make sure that you do a site survey. Make sure that all of your racking has uh, adequate grounding per standards, and those standards are outlined in the documentation. Uh, you also want to make sure that you have ad adequate powering with 48 volts power. We're using the Valera power system for our power plant uh, here. 
And if you do use power plant, make sure that there's uh, adequate AC power for that. Okay, the other end of your power harness is already pre-terminated uh, with these two hole spades. Uh, they require 40 amps to run the shell, so we're going to uh, terminate these where we have uh, circuit breakers. Our fans will be next, but we're going to terminate all of these here on the back of our Valera shell. The, uh, the A feed, remember you have a battery side and you have a return side, so uh, the input is going to be your battery side for the A feed and the B feed, and then the return for the A feed and the B feed will be here. After you've terminated the, uh, the 1150E shelf, uh, you'll need to terminate the fans. Now, the fans require 7.5 amps uh, fuses, and so we'll want to terminate those uh, where the fuses go here. Uh, you'll want to make sure uh, that you look at these terminations. They do come pre-terminated, but you may have to adjust this depending upon the power source that you're using. Each fan comes with an A feed and a B feed. Your, uh, your battery is on top. Your return is on the bottom. All right. After your connections are made, you'll want to make note of where these are connected, your A feed and your B feed for uh, the, the top fan, the bottom fan. Uh, now we'll need to move to the front of the shell. You can see our rectifier shelf has been powered up or properly adjusted. Uh, we're going to begin powering up our system starting with the fans, and so we'll need to install our GMT fuses. These are 7.5 amp fuses. Once the fuses are installed, the fan should power up. Okay, after you've applied power to the fan shelves, you want to make sure that they're running properly uh, and that they are blowing and that there are no alarms uh, at the shelf. Next, we're going to apply power to the uh, 1150E shelf. Uh, this requires two 40 amp circuit breakers. Uh, once these are installed in the proper places, uh, you simply just need to turn them on.